Hi there, and welcome to this week's Midweek Memo, which is going to look slightly different to our normal Midweek Memo. This is more of a connections video. This is a series of videos that we like to do to really get to know people within our church family. And I have with us today uh, Reverend John Featherston, who is our new Associate Vicar. So John, you, you've, um, you've been with us for how long now? A couple of months. Yeah, going on for two you. months. Yeah, it's almost like you're part of the furniture now. Oh, <laughs> it's great to have you. Great to be here. Yeah, and so I'm going to ask you a, a few questions so just to, to unpack them and let us get to know who you are, let us get to know what makes you tick, that kind of oh, thing. So yeah. tell us first, what are your impressions of, of Croydon as a place? We're loving the diversity of Croydon, just um, seeing East Croydon, kind of the part that I guess was in my mind when we thought of Croydon, um, and then coming here and just realising how leafy this part of Croydon is, how close you are to beautiful walks and countryside, uh, but there's a diversity of the place, but also the diversity of the people, um, that, and a wonderful picture of God's diversity of people from every tribe and tongue and nation. So. Yeah, that really is amazing, isn't it? I love it. Um, so what I like to do in these times when we get to chat together is maybe get some backstory. Let's start at the beginning. Let's let's um, let's ask what brought you here, and not just here to Emmanuel, but what brought you to this point in your life. Yeah, I think first um, my parents because they were followers of Jesus. Mom's still around. Dad Dad passed away, um, but they brought us up to to know Jesus. They wanted us to know Him. That was their biggest kind of dream and prayer for us. Um, so they took us to churches in Brussels and then in China when we were living there. Uh, and then when I was 10 and we came back to the UK, we moved to Seven Oaks. And I remember them saying that we moved because they found a really good church. And that's why we moved there um, rather than, you know, the other way around. That yeah. was really striking. Um, so, yeah, they took us to church. And at that church on a youth weekend away, when I was, I think, 13 or 14, um, I understood that Jesus died for me personally. It wasn't just my parents' faith. I needed to own that. And he died for me personally, and I needed to ask for his forgiveness and receive that wonderful gift of eternal life. Mm. Uh, so I did that then. Um, and then kind of growing up through school, I don't think I find it very easy to be a Christian. Um, really significant for, moment for me was actually leaving school and going off to India for five months, to South oh. India. Mm. Um, so I went with Scripture Union with a little team. And, um, and that was just as well as being a, an amazing country and a brilliant experience. Um, getting to learn to depend on God in a different country out of your comfort zone was really helpful for me spiritually. Mm. Um, yeah. And then uni, I don't know if you want me to. Yeah, no, carry on, carry on. I really want to like go through all stages of your life until. You okay. Get so uni, uh, uni was great. I did undergraduate theology because I wanted to go deep in the foundations of my faith. And I love doing that. And then afterwards I'd been thinking about whether, ordained ministry might be a thing since I was about 16, um, but was definitely clear that when I left uni, I wanted to go and work for a few years. So somehow I ended up in a retail management thing. So I did retail management for M&S, like their training program for a couple of years, which was fun, hard work, retail's demanding. You learn a lot about yourself, a lot about human nature, um, worked all over stores, all over the South for that. Um, and then really enjoyed the second job I did. So I worked for a youth unemployment charity in East London called City Gateway that have been doing, are still doing amazing work, mm. getting young people from, from disadvantaged backgrounds into sustainable jobs. So I love doing that. Wow. Um, and then halfway through the kind of two and a bit years there, I thought, oh, let's press on again with, with whether ministry longer term is the right thing. So started the whole Church of England process, you've got to go through all mm. of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, fast forward a bit, I am got ordained, worked at Christchurch the last four years in Cockfosters in North London, very opposite part of the city um, and there uh, at the church I was working for I met my wife Claire um, she came to our last in-person prayer meeting before the first lockdown and got chatting at the end really enjoyed meeting up and then um, a couple of months later when we we could still only go for socially distanced walks we started meeting up and we kind of went from there and meeting up over walking is a great way to do it because you've not got the kind of awkward pauses over yeah you know over a meal and stuff can you um, get to know each other. Oh so, wow! So yeah, yours, yours was a real, a really like a lockdown romance. Yeah, it was properly um, a lockdown yeah, romance. Yeah, but but you guys are married, so we're you, married you now. Didn't hang around. Married last June. Yeah, no. that's cool. Yeah. Wow. When you're sure, you're sure. Right? Absolutely. Oh, that's that's such a brilliant story that you guys found yourself, but found each other at, at that point just before the lockdown hit, and then you, your romance blossomed through that. Um, uh, tell us a bit about 
uh, mainly, mainly for, for me, a question like, mm. what does curacy look like? Like, because you did your curacy right at yeah. Christchurch, right. and and now you're an associate vicar. So what's yeah. what's kind of the difference? And speak in layman's terms for, sure, for people yeah, like yeah. me who don't yeah. know this the, the ins and outs of the way that a yeah. vicar gets trained up in the Church of England. That's right. So you do training at a college first, and then a curacy is kind of like a you're ordained, but it's a sort of extended training post. Mm -hmm. um, so you work with people who've been doing ministry for a while and you spend three or four years just learning from them mm. um, and doing all the kind of things you would expect in, in pastoral ministry, preaching and leading and meeting up with people and doing counselling and um, getting involved in what the church is doing in the community and all those kind of things. Um, but all the time you are, I guess you're having supervision, you're learning from, mm. from a senior colleague and growing through them. So. That was great to do at Christchurch. I had two fantastic colleagues, actually three over the time I was there, yeah. who I learned from, which was great. Oh, wow, amazing. And then, and I suppose that, so that your curacy came to an end, yeah. and then that brought you to apply for the role here at Emmanuel. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just interested, like, what, what was it about this role? What was it about this church? And what, what do you think uh, actually brought you here, in a way? Yeah, a couple of things. One is the sort of, like, objectively what, what is the church like? What's it been doing? And just looking back at the church's history, um, I think we've got a heart for the vulnerable. And so just seeing the church's way that it's engaged in the community, things like Waggy Tales and Lighthouse and all sorts of ways that the church has been doing that. I think, oh, this looks like an exciting place to, to fit into that and mm. to, to, um, to see what God, God's doing in that kind of ministry and join in and, and see how that can grow. Um, so that was a really exciting thing. Croydon is a really diverse, interesting area. So, you know, yeah, well, this part of Croydon, South Croydon, maybe, you know, lots of folk are quite wealthy, prosperous, but we're not far from folk who aren't mm. and who, um, as well as their deepest need of meeting Jesus, have real tangible needs. Mm. And this church family feels really well positioned to to help with some of that stuff. Mm. Um, so that's where I'm really excited about the Micah series that's coming up, just yeah. hearing God's heart for for those who are vulnerable. Um, so that was one one big reason, kind of like how the, what the church has been involved in, how it might grow in that. Um, and then the other was just this, I guess, subjective sense of real peace that mm. it felt like the place that mm. the Lord was calling us to. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, and that's and that's what amazes me. Like through all, all of this stuff, like the the heart for the vulnerable, and uh, you know the, the real Holy Spirit moments of of things just fitting and you can only mm. put that down to the outworkings of, mm. of God's Holy Spirit, right? Mm. And I'm, I'm just interested, uh, and I love to ask this question of a lot of people, is mm. there a, has there been a moment in your life, like a real Holy Spirit moment, that something that you can, there's something that happened that you can only put down to Jesus being involved in it? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. And I think, again, there's this sort of, there's the subjective stuff. So, um, moments when in grief for us when we've had a deep sense of God's love even in the midst of that grief and pain um so knowing that that God loves me you know um Romans chapter 8 talks about um he who didn't spare his own son but gave him up for us won't he also give us everything that we need so God loves me so much that he sent my his son and that means that I know that he's going to give me everything I need for this life and to take me into eternal life. Um, and that assurance that God is with you and loves you even in the midst of brokenness and pain, which doesn't make those things necessarily easier, but it reminds you that God is not absent in your pain. And that has been really helpful for us. And I think you can only explain um, having peace in trials through God being at work. Mm. Um, and the other things, I guess, are, are less moments, but more looking back and catching yourself thinking, oh, I can see ways that I'm different now than I was a few years ago. Yeah. So I used to be really impatient, I think. I get frustrated really easily. Um, like airports, queues, those kind of things drive you crazy. And and now they, they don't in quite the same way. I still get frustrated sometimes, but they don't they don't get at me in the way that they used to. And and things like that. And then when I was at university, when I was in my early twenties, I think I realized I was I could be quite argumentative. And um, and I was massively challenged by the book of James that talks about how you use your tongue mm -hmm. and God used that to work on me. And that doesn't mean I don't still say say some cross words sometimes, but it's different. Like, and I, and I don't attribute that to me. I can look back and I can think, oh, God's Holy Spirit's been graciously working. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. That's really cool. Um, okay, 
Here's some quick fire questions. Go for it. That I haven't prepped John for. Great, let's go. Up to this point, John knew what was coming. To the, <laughs> from beyond this point, not so much. Here we go. Are you ready? Quick questions. Yeah. Quick answers. Yeah. Favorite pizza topping? Uh, pepperoni. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? No. Thank the Lord we can be friends. This right. is good. Please, Thank you. That was the correct it. answer. Well done. I did know that was the answer you wanted yeah, me to give. Exactly. Me. Good. Um, now, I think this next question can tell a lot about a person. Um, are you a mountains person or a sea person? Mountains or sea? Oh, I'm going to go sea, but I love both. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I'm a mountains guy, by okay. the way. Just, just... We're still friends. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We can, we can, we can coexist. Um, favorite season? Favorite season of the year? Oh, I get really cold very easily, so summer. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I do too, but then my coloring just, I just burn. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, now, I know you're a book lover. Mm -hmm. I have seen your book collection and mm -hmm. it is very impressive. How many books do you own? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you, in you including Claire's books? Uh, I mean, the, ones, the, the vast array of bookshelves that I've seen in your house. I, I genuinely haven't counted them. I'm going to guess 500 maybe. Wow. Um, okay, so you've got a lot of books, um, but what are you reading right now? Uh, so I'm reading a fiction book at the moment before I go to bed called Hamnet, which Natasha Burke lent me, which is brilliant. Kind of imagining a bit of backstory of Shakespeare and his family. Um, so I'm loving that. And then I'm reading a lot of stuff on Micah, preaching through that. Yeah. Um, so those are the main things at the moment. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Now, um, here's one last quick fire question. What was the worst sermon illustration you have ever used? I'm not great at them, so it's kind of picking from from a whole bunch of not brilliant <laughs> ones. Probably what I think when you try and make a joke and it bombs. Okay, I've done yeah. that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I won't share. I won't embarrass myself no, again. No, not at all. Not at all. That's brilliant. Now I've got one last question. This is enough to be a quick fire one as well. Um, but it, it's more about um, how we want to get to know you and, and what you're gonna be doing here, but we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, I know that your job isn't just about doing, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So uh, for you, what is the most exciting thing about working in ministry? Um, what gets you out of bed and makes you want to come to work each morning? Yeah, I, so I think ministry is about love. First and foremost, God's love for us, because um, if we don't get that, if we're not excited by that, then we can't really do ministry, because ministry is all about sharing God's love. And I think here, like, uh, ordained ministry that that looks like the stuff you might imagine preaching and teaching and meeting up with people and sharing Christ from the scriptures um, helping us to grow in grow in him um, I think particular ways it might look like here so I'm starting to meet with some of the uh, our great brothers and sisters who are involved in ministry to seniors and loving that um, and just trying to see how I can help with that mm -hmm. um, and in thinking kind of in line with these micro sermons about the ministries that we're doing, the vulnerable, and maybe some of the ways they might grow and possibly some new ministries as well. So, but that's gonna come from how the church family respond to, to the coming few weeks of preaching. So I'm excited yeah. for, I don't know what that's, where that's gonna lead and how that ties in with the vision, but, yeah. but I'm excited to see what God might do. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Well, I'd love, I'd love to finish off by praying for you, if that's okay. Maybe you could pray as well, pray through your, your time here and all that. So, um, yeah, and if you're watching this, maybe you can use this time to pray for John and Claire at the same time. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for John, and we thank you so much for Claire. And we thank you for bringing them to us. We thank you that you have gifted us with, with their presence and with their uh, capabilities. I pray that as they are here, that they will really come to know more of you, more of your people, that will, you will not only use them for, for your glory, but you will feed into them for your glory. That You will fill them up with more of your love, more of your grace, more of your Holy Spirit. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, and Father, you give us these wonderful words. See what great love you have given us, that we should be called your children. And that is what we are. Father, praise you that um, through Christ you can make us your children um, and together part of um, one amazing family. Um, so, Father, I pray you would grow us as a family, uh, more like your son um, in how we are with one another and also more like your son in, in how we are with those who don't know you. Um, Father, we pray you would do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine as we think of 
um, the vision statement and all that we've just been thinking about together. We pray that you would really work that kind of um, ministry amongst us. We know that we can't do that, but we pray that you would do that by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, John. Thank Thank you you for joining us for this conversation. It's been really, really great to chat to you. And thank you, everybody, for watching this. If you've enjoyed this content, maybe if you could just give give the video a like. If you don't already subscribe to our channel, hit the subscribe button as well. Um, You can even look back through our other Connections videos to get to know some other members of our church family. Um, And yeah, watch out for the next one. See you soon.